Today on Daily Planet, shrinking a fire engine down from this to this. We'll meet the man behind a firefighting invention that's catching on like wildfire. Plus, we're going to show you what this groundbreaking test has to do with ships plowing through Arctic ice. And imagine flying a plane with moves like this. We'll meet a 24-year-old Canadian pilot who doesn't have to imagine much longer. Time to buckle up for one heck of a ride. This is Daily Planet. Greetings and welcome to Daily Planet. I'm Zaya Tong. I'm Jay Ingram. Today we have everything from big discovery in Antarctica, and I mean big, to demystifying hair dyes. We're also going to check out a new 3D video game and get some tips on surgery for dummies. Actually, surgery on dummies. Okay, so the surgery is not for dumb people. It's on inanimate Exactly. Humanoids. It's actually for smart people, and they're actually army medics testing out surgery. Working on techniques. dummies. <laughs> yes, of course, right. I've got it all. But first, we're off to Los Angeles to meet a man who's obsessed with shrinking things down for size. Since the first one hit the road, fire trucks keep getting bigger and bigger with huge, powerful pumps inside. California stunt car driver turned inventor Eddie Paul aims to replace these with something smaller. This thing goes zero to really fast, really quick. Mechanical technology hasn't been touched in hundreds of years. Or electronics, I mean, there's something new every single day. But mechanical things, they're, it's, they, uh, this is turn of the century technology, a lot of the stuff. So I've just come up with a transistor of pumps. In between building eye candy for movies, Eddie's come up with a pump that could modernize firefighting. Well, this is equivalent, I hate to say this, but equivalent to a fire truck. So we basically replaced a fire truck with this. The heart of your average fire truck is a huge steel pump that can shoot a thousand gallons of water a minute. But that means you need a lot of water to last even a few minutes. Eddie's pump is lighter, smaller, and more efficient. This is a positive displacement piston pump where most of the fire trucks, I think all of the fire trucks use a, a centrifugal pump. So that's where we're different. This pump has, does 24 pump cycles every time it turns one revolution. Uh, the controls on the end are for air, surfactant, and then uh, water input over here. So we can control all three of those factors. And out here goes to the fire hose, which puts the wet stuff on the red stuff, as they say. In the middle of a forest, getting the wet stuff to put on the red stuff is a challenge, one that forest fire guru Bill Patterson knows well. Our water supply generally has to be portable. There's not very many fire hydrants out here in the forest. Bill gets paid to set fires on purpose so they don't start accidentally. We routinely burn about 30,000 acres each year to reduce the hazard as far as fuels so that when the soldiers who are training accidentally start a wildfire, it doesn't become some catastrophe that endangers life and property. Today, 1,200 acres are going to burn under his watchful eye. It's really about as much art as it is science. But here in the dense Louisiana forest, art and science can quickly turn to disaster if the fire gets out of hand. So this ATV becomes a fire truck thanks to Eddie Paul's transistor of pumps. We use compressed air foam in many cases to form what we call a wet line, where we would spray down a line of foam on the ground. Then we can ignite whichever side of that line that we want to burn. And we use that method. We call that fighting fire with fire. Compressed air foam, CAF, is a proven fire eater, part soap, part water, part air. Like a massive stream of shaving cream that can stop fire in its tracks. That because the foam itself is mostly composed of air and not water, it makes your water supply go a whole lot further. So, uh, for instance, one of our utility vehicles carries 50 gallons of water. You could probably put out as much fire with that as you could with 1,000 gallons of just plain water going through a plain pump. The calf system goes everywhere an ATV can. The foam is sprayed onto trees and buildings that need to be protected from the fire. We burn up all the fuel that's in front of either the prescribed burn or the wildfire that's coming. That way you have a much wider fire break than if you just spray the line on the ground and cross your fingers and hope that the fire didn't cross it. If the fire did jump the line or start to get away in the woods, an off-road fire truck is going to save the day, which makes Bill pretty happy. There's been many cases where we've needed the ability to uh, put out a fire in a really remote location where you ordinarily couldn't get with any kind of, uh, of road-going equipment. 
And these uh, utility uh, vehicles equipped with these compressed air foam systems are, are just tremendous for that kind of situation. In fact, for Bill, it doesn't get much better than this. We can always hope for the magic button, you know, that you push the big red easy button, push it and make the fire go out or whatever. Right now, I'd say technology is very much maturing and I don't really expect any huge developments. Since an easy button isn't likely, Eddie figures it's just a matter of time before news of his invention spreads, like wildfire. When we got into the industry, we jumped into an industry that was based on tradition, so people were afraid to try something new. Uh, it's slowly coming around. It's, it's uh, one of those 20-year uh, overnight success stories. So if his smaller pump does catch on, we might be seeing fewer of these racing down the street. That was a little fire. Time now for some ice. No shortage of it this